Well, good evening and a very warm welcome to this Carols by Candlelight service. Um, and that's an equally warm welcome to anybody who's watching us online. Um, we hope the technology works and the sound is coming through. And I hope that when they turn the lights off, the people online can still see what's going on. But I'm sure the techies have got all that under control. Um, it's great that we can come together to celebrate the birth of... Uh, Jesus Christ and uh, it's always a great time when we come to events like this to sing all the traditional carols and listen to some of the readings that we're familiar with but I want to encourage you tonight to really uh, worship the Lord as we sing these carols to really uh, press in and recognize the message that comes through um, about the Christmas story I don't know whether you've seen the image that's been circulating, I saw it on Facebook, and um, I've not seen it before, but it was of a traditional Christmas wreath, the ones that we hang on the door, but only half of it was the decorated wreath. The other half was the crown of thorns, and the words that were on each side were, uh, this is the season, this is the reason. And um, the birth of Jesus heralds the coming of the kingdom of God. And uh, we're going to say shortly, in a few minutes, the Lord's Prayer. And part of that prayer is, uh, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And that's really what Jesus uh, is born to initiate. He initiated the coming of the kingdom of God, the coming of heaven to earth. And that is still God's plan these days, even though we're facing difficult times and difficult seasons. So let me encourage you to uh, look for that as we go through this uh, time of worship. Just a couple of other things before we start. Um, when we come to sing the carol, O Come All Ye Faithful, um, it's got a fourth verse that is quite often left for Christmas morning. Um, but we're going to sing the fourth verse. We're just going to change the words to, uh, in, in the traditional one, it's born this happy morning, but we're going to say born that happy morning. So um, I think we, we haven't got the words for it, but just do your best to, to sing along. So could we have the, the bidding prayer up? Thank you. In the name of God, who has delivered us from the dominion of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, we welcome you, grace to you and peace. We are gathered together to proclaim and receive in our hearts the good news of the coming of God's kingdom, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate with confidence and joy the birth of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. We're going to pray in a moment for uh, folks who are perhaps going through difficult times, people who are suffering, um, people in fear. So I'll leave a moment of silence at that point where you can offer your own prayers. We pray that we may respond in penitence and faith to the glory of his kingdom, its works of justice and its promise of peace its blessing and its hope. And as we seek to renew our allegiance to God's loving purpose, we pray for all who at this time especially need his pity and protection. We pray for the sick in body, mind or spirit. We pray for those who suffer from loss of dignity or loss of hope. And we pray for those who face the future with fear or walk in the shadow of death. May God, of his grace and mercy, grant to all his people a new trust in his good providence and a new obedience to his sovereign word. For to him is most justly due all glory, honour, worship and praise, world without end. Amen. Amen. And let's join together as we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now Kira is going to come up and uh, set things off with our first reading. Psalm 85, verses 4 to 11. Restore us again, God our Saviour, and put away your displeasure towards us. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger through all generations? Will you not revive us again, that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your unfailing love, Lord, and grant us your salvation. I will listen to what God the Lord says. He promises peace to his people, his faithful servants, and let them not, let them not to turn fo folly. Surely his salvation is near for those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Love and faithfulness meet together, righteousness and peace kiss each other. Faithfulness springs from the earth and righteousness looks down from heaven.
And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company, the heavenly host, appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. has believed our message and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed he grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a root out of dry ground he had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him nothing in his appearance that we should desire him he was despised and rejected by mankind a man of suffering and familiar with pain like one from whom people hide their faces he was despised, and we held him in low esteem.
Jesus was born in the town of Bethlehem in Judah during the time when Herod was king. When Jesus was born, some wise men from the east came to Jerusalem. They asked, where is the baby um, who was born to be king of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod heard this, he was troubled as well as all the people in Jerusalem. Herod called a meeting of all the leading priests and teachers of law and asked them where the Christ was to be born. They answered, in the town of Bethlehem in Judah. The prophet wrote this in the scriptures, but you Bethlehem in the land of Judah are important among the tribes of Judah. A ruler will come from you who will be like a shepherd to all my people Israel. Micah verses five chapter, uh, sorry, chapter two, five verse two. Then Herod had, had a secret meeting with the wise men and learned from them the exact time when they first saw the star. They sent, he sent the wise men to Bethlehem saying, look carefully for the child. When you find him, come and tell me so I can worship him too. After the wise men heard the king, they left. The star they had seen in the east went before them until it stopped above the place where the child was. When the wise men saw the star, they were filled with joy. They came to the house where the child was and saw him with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. They opened their gifts and gave him treasures of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But God warned the wise men in a dream not to go back to Herod, so they returned to their own country by a different way.
think we're going to watch a short video. Isaiah 9, verse 6 to 7. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this.
In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. So Alan's going to come and uh, share with us now. So we're just going to pray for Alan before he uh, preaches. Um, I guess this is going to be your last Christmas year, so uh, it's a... Great to have Alan, but it's sad as well, because last time we'll have him preaching at a Christmas celebration, uh, or a carol service anyway, so let's pray for you, Alan. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for Alan and uh, his family. Thank you for the many, so many years of faithful service here. And uh, we do want to pray blessing on them uh, as a family as they prepare to move on in the new year. But as for now, we pray for Alan as he comes to share with us. Pray that you'll... Uh, just anoint the words that he speaks to us and that through his words we might have a greater insight into uh, the meaning of the season as, as how Christ Jesus came and dwelt amongst us and uh, enabled us to know Father God as our loving Heavenly Father. So be with Alan as he shares now in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Ian, and good evening, everybody, whether you're watching at home or here in this building. What are you hoping for this Christmas? Socks? Scent? Sleep, maybe? Last Christmas, like a lot of people, we were hoping for a family get-together at our house, and that was ruled out at the last minute. We felt a bit cheated. But somehow or other, despite um, snow and rain and COVID restrictions, we did manage to meet up on Formby Beach near Liverpool just a few days after Christmas. Uh, we had a walk and the uh, co-op, and I shouldn't probably advertise, but the scotch eggs and the um, flask of tea and the sand dunes, they were great, a real treat. Even so, it wasn't quite what we were hoping for. I wonder what are you hoping for, not just this Christmas, but in 2022 and maybe even beyond? More of the same? Something better? Have the last couple of years left you a bit weary and wanting something more, something different? I wonder why you're here or watching this carol service. Why are you here? Is it partly that you're looking for something familiar and reassuring? And it is tempting to, to look to Christmas and carols as a bit of an escape, maybe, from a changing and uncertain world. Or are we looking for something else? A better music to dance to, maybe? A better story to believe in? Something deeper that speaks to the doubts and fears of our time, that gives us a solid basis for believing that there actually is more to hope for. The Christian hope is based on a person, an unlikely person. When the angel of the Lord appeared to the shepherds and told them to go to Jerusalem to find their saviour, the Messiah, this was the sign they were told to look for you will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. 
What's more, a baby in a small village called Bethlehem and raised as the son of a carpenter in Nazareth. Nazareth, such a backwater that one of Jesus' future disciples said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? So much for his birthplace. What about his appearance, what he looked like? As Isaiah prophesied, and we heard that this evening, he had not beauty or majesty to attract us to him. He was despised and rejected, a man of suffering and familiar with pain. Not the sort of person you'd be looking for as a savior or a king. But we see that there's something more going on when the birth of this baby is announced to shepherds living in the fields near Bethlehem. When an angel of the Lord appeared to the shepherds and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, they were terrified. Not surprising, really. I think fear is the natural response when we encounter the glory of the creator of the universe. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. And when the shepherds went off and found this child lying in a manger, they returned to their sheep, glorifying and praising God for all they had seen and heard. And in John's Gospel, that last reading that Mark read to us just now, we see this brighter, bigger nativity story coming through in full colour. Jesus is the Word who was with God in the beginning, through whom all things were made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all people, the light that shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. So John's big reveal is that this baby, wrapped in cloths, lying in a manger, is also God in all his glory, full of grace and truth, who became flesh and dwelt among us. So this baby is the hope of the world. The Christian hope, as well as being focused on a person, an unlikely person, looks forward to a time when this baby will be recognized as king, king of all. Isaiah prophesied, again we heard this, this same child will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. But when we look around us at all the injustice and violence in the world around us, it's only right to ask, how can that be? How can that happen? When will this kingdom come? It seems a long way off. But to answer that, we need to fast forward from the baby in a manger to an adult Jesus, nailed to a cross. To take a step back for a minute, we can't fix the world by ourselves. We can't control life by ourselves because we all sin and fall short of the glory of God. And so God himself had to step in and break that cycle of sin and death. And so it was that Jesus, though innocent of any crime, died in our place, sacrificing himself once for all. And so when he was raised from the dead three days later, he overcame the curse of sin and death. And one day at the end of time, this is the, the Christian hope at the end of time, he will return in clouds of glory to claim his kingdom. So the cross is where the judgment and the mercy of God come together. Jonathan Feng, I don't know if you've heard of him, but he's professor of physics and astronomy at California University. He said this, what's truly amazing about the Christian faith is the idea that the God who made the universe from quarks to galaxies also cares enough about us to be born as a human and to suffer and die to bring forgiveness and new life to broken people. Jesus' kingdom is coming. 
and it's an everlasting and eternal kingdom. How do we enter it? By welcoming and receiving the King. But first of all, to do that, we need to be open, to be listening, to be hearing what God has to say. So what can we learn from the main characters in this nativity story? Let's look first of all at Mary. There she was, understandably surprised, maybe shocked, by the angel and his message. The message that she'd been chosen, of all people, to give birth to the Son of God. That she chose not just to hear it, but to receive it. She believed what Gabriel had said and agreed to it. Then Joseph, imagine him, when he found out Mary was pregnant, he presumed, naturally, that she had cheated on him. He was going to divorce her. But when he too met an angel in a dream who told him the father of the baby was God himself, he agreed not to divorce Mary, but to bring up Jesus as his own son. Then there's the wise men. When they were warned in a dream, do you remember, not to go back to Herod, they went, by, they went home by another way. Now, of course, God will not necessarily speak to us, principally at least, through angels and dreams, as he did to Mary, Joseph, and the wise men. It might be possibly through something someone says to us, maybe casually, that surprises us. It might be a prompting in our spirit. It might be a word from the Bible that just goes home and seems to be relevant to us at the very moment that it's read to us or that we read it for ourselves. It might be a prompting in our spirit, a pang of conscience. But however God speaks to us, the key thing is that we're open and listening to what he has to say and ready to respond. The thought for the day contributor, Brian Draper, recently put it something like this, if I've got what he said right, it's more or less this. Amidst the narrowcasts and broadcasts and podcasts, amidst the noise of social media, a very quiet signal persists. And it simply says, are you receiving me? Are you receiving me? Because God's promise is that all who receive Jesus, who believe in his name, will become children of God. And Jesus knows each one of us, actually, intimately and completely. All our thoughts, fears, sins and shame, things that we'd rather he didn't know, probably. And yet he loves us enough to give his life for us. So the greatest gift of Christmas, as that little video said, is actually Jesus himself. When the shepherds and the wise men found him, they responded in their own way. What about us today? Christina Rossetti's carol puts it so well, don't you think? What can I give him, poor as I am? If I were a shepherd, I would bring a lamb. If I were a wise man, I would do my part, yet what I can I give him, give my heart. The gift of life with Jesus in his kingdom, it comes for free, but we need to receive it, and to receive it, we must give our heart. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. As in previous years, we are having a Christmas offering. So any donations that you choose to give this evening uh, will give to, uh, go to Furnace Mind and the Jigsaw Project. That's a project we support as a church um, among street children in Manila in the Philippines. And you can either give by bank transfer, obviously, or you, there's a contact, contact, contactless giving at the back, um, or you can leave cash in offertory bowls if you choose to. And do, when you go, take with you, uh, there are these booklets, Why Christmas, if you want to find out more. And we regularly run Alpha courses, and there are invitations. I think there should be one in each pew. Uh, do take one of those. The next course is in January. 
So the musicians are going to come back and lead us again as we sing our next carol, O Come, All Ye Faithful. Please feel free to take a seat. So we're just going to close with the dismissal. God sent his angels from glory to bring to shepherds the good news of Jesus' birth. Amen. We thank you, Lord. We have heard his story, the story of God's own son. Amen. We thank you, Lord. May he fill us with joy to bring this good news to others today. Amen. We thank you, Lord. Amen. Well, I hope you've uh, enjoyed this evening. It's been great, hasn't it, to sing these uh, carols and to celebrate the birth of Jesus. We would normally encourage you all to stay behind at this point and to enjoy um, some mulled wine and mince pies. But because of the current... Um, COVID situation, uh, we still want to offer you the mulled wine and mince pies, but we're going to do it as you leave the church. So the idea is that you uh, will be uh, told to come down this central aisle, go around up the north aisle, grab a mug of uh, steaming mulled wine and a mince pie, and then enjoy it as you 
leave the church. You could, of course, uh, stand in the, in the churchyard and socially distanced, of course, mix and mingle out there. That's fine, but we, we didn't feel it was appropriate to be um, too close in the church building as things are at the moment. So um, I think the stewards are going to just direct you a little bit and tell you when to go. If you need to go without a mince pie and a mold wine, just, just sneak out the back door. Okay, don't tell anybody. Right. <laughs> Over to John.